when did I realize my race? I'd say I was about 12 years old. I was 10 years old. I was about 14. So I was six years old, first grade, and a girl in my class was having a yard sale, but she said that I could not come because her mother told her that black people steal a lot. I was honestly just really confused because I didn't really understand why I couldn't go. Like, what does black people stealing have to do with me? I grew up in Puerto Rico, so like race really wasn't a thing because we are the race. So you'd see people and be like, oh, that's a black Puerto Rican, that's a white Puerto Rican, that's a Dominican Puerto Rican. I didn't really get race till I was the only Hispanic who joined an all white fraternity. And even then, it still didn't hit me till we would go and visit the other chapters. Like we'd walk in and be like, are you a, did you know they had that? They all had the same jokes. Like it was always like, oh, we need a metal detector now. And I bet the house is clean. Oh, here comes sticky fingers. The dumb thing is, the jokes I heard when I was 17, I still hear now and I'm 30. Just different frat guys. I was in middle school and I was having lunch with friends and a kid called across the courtyard. Hey, Reka, where did you get your shoes from? Kmart because you're poor or because you're from India? We were 10, so this is basically my first experience with the building blocks of a racist argument. His logic is, I'm Indian, therefore I must be poor, therefore I must buy cheap shoes. Is that a future Trump supporter? When I was 12 years old, I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood. You know, a little Spanish, a little black family sprinkled in. There was one time, went to my neighbor's house, and we found a trapped squirrel in a cage. What did we do? Man, we freed that squirrel. You gotta free the squirrels, baby. I get home, then there's a knock on my door. It's animal control and the neighbors, and they wanna tell my mom about what happened. My mom, she sits me down. She says, I know it was you and your friends, but you have to be careful because people are gonna treat you differently. I've never felt like that before, where I knew I was in trouble and my mom didn't like ground me for it. She taught me a lesson. That is a mind. So I was going to this new church where I was surrounded by kids my own age for the first time. And they all, you know, were super nice, but it was the jokes that really like hit me the hardest. Suddenly they were, you know, pulling their eyes back to imitate mine or speaking to me in like broken English. None of the jokes were even good. My eyes are great. I was about 14 living in South Louisiana and it was early one morning I wanted to go catfishing. So you gotta get in this little boat, it's smaller than a canoe, and you gotta go way out. So I'm getting my friends together and my one friend who's black, she said no. And I was like, why not? Come on, it's fun, it's danger. And she was like, I'm black. I'm not gonna go seek out danger. That happens to me all the time. Oh. Yeah. So I was born in Canada, and when I was about five years old, my family moved to the US, and before I could enroll in my public elementary school, they made me take this test, which I thought was like a fun test that every kid had to take. And then I talked to my parents about it, and they were pissed because it was a test for ESOL, which is English for Speakers of Other Languages. I'm from Canada, not China, never China. Uh, so I passed that test. I went to a small private middle school with about 65 kids, mostly black and Hispanic. And every Friday they had a speaker series. And one time a blonde haired blue eyed woman came in to speak to us and my classmate said to her, you have very beautiful eyes. And my principal corrected her and said, no, you have beautiful eyes. It made me kind of understand that the mark of beauty isn't whiteness, it's how you feel about yourself. That moment made me feel proud to be black. If I go back in time, I'd tell my younger self to fuck with them more, to pass that ESOL test with flying colors, and then show up only speaking Chinese. First thing I'd say is, don't get in that boat, Amber, okay? It's gonna fall over and it's gonna be really scary. And the second thing I'd say to my friend is, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Honestly, I don't know what I would do. Like, part of me thinks I would tell the teacher, but like, what's she supposed to do? You can't force that girl's mom to not be a racist. It's weird, because I don't know what I would've told my 12-year-old self. I think that it's good that that happened, because if I didn't get that lesson then, I could've gotten that lesson in a way different, deadlier way. So I'd rather be about some rabbit squirrels. 12-year-old Joel, just practice your smile for every time a white person thinks they're saying something super clever about your race, you know, just like that. Don't worry, your shoes were awesome.